Super. We are live. Welcome, everyone. And happy Leap Day. It is a rare day indeed, once every four years. And we are going to draw slash paint this hoppy frog. Isn't that just the like most cheerful frog you've ever seen? He is so delightful, so colorful. I'm very excited to do this with you. Let me know in the live chat, maybe where you're from, maybe if, uh, if you're celebrating anything today, maybe you know someone who is a leap day baby. I met one today actually. So at my place of work, I work at a bowling alley. There was a little girl celebrating her birthday today and um, I asked her how old she was. She said two, because it's only the second time her actual birthday has come around. She's actually eight. But um, she had some balloons that had the number two on them, because it's, it's so rare, so special that her birthday is actually here. So that was kind of cute to see today. Uh, my name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to say a big thank you to those who uh, sent me a tip when you got your free ticket to this event. Your support means a lot to me. I'm going to continue to do loads more free events, not just because you tip me, because I enjoy doing them so much and bringing joy and art to everyone. This is quite beginner friendly. It might not look it, it might look complicated to you, but you are in very good hands, my hands, and I'll guide you through it step by step. Welcome to Kikini from Australia. That's super, it must be, it must be tomorrow, right? Maybe leap day is already over for you, but that's okay. Thank you for joining us. Can card in, that's not too far. Uh, I'm in I'm in London, Ontario. So, all right, Deborah's going to do this later. Perfect. Lots of people just tune in for the live, watch it, kind of get a feel of of how it goes, and then they will uh, do it on their own time. Because this video, even though we're live, it's going to be available forever afterwards to do anytime. Maybe in four years from now, you'll think back and think, "Oh, I should have done that leap day." frog. Do it in four years from now. Hi, Joanna. Good to see you. Welcome to Linda. Hello, Clarissa. Good to see you guys. All right, let's get started with like some supplies and you can sort of see most of them on the screen. So everyone who uh, RSVP'd on the website and got their free ticket would have gotten this uh, printable traceable outline. This is my original in pencil. The light kind of washes it out. Um, you can print it any size um, and you don't have to necessarily trace it. You could just reference it and freehand sketch it. What I did was I popped a little piece of tape. I taped this outline to the back of my watercolor paper, put it up against a window on a bright sunny day, and then I traced it that way. Or if you have a tracing table, light table, tracing paper, carbon paper, or again, just freehand sketch it. Perfect. So the outline, the link is, I put it down in the description below, just in case you're watching this in the future and you're wondering, how do I get that outline? I didn't get an email. This is after the fact. It's down in the description below forever. So that'll be there forever. So here's my watercolor paper with my frog pre-traced. Too much light. There he is. Um, you don't have to use paper. What if you want to do this on a canvas using acrylics? You could totally do that. Um, what about a beautiful piece of wood? Trace it onto some wood and see what you can do on that. That would be interesting. What about trace that on a white t-shirt and fabric paint? Hmm, ideas. So that one's ready. That's the example. I have some watercolors and some paintbrushes. Now, of course, I just mentioned you could do this in acrylics. You could do this in um, colored pencils, pencil crayons. Do this in pastels, anything you want. Mixed media, 
was the title. So I'm going to demonstrate in watercolor and like markers, but you could do anything you want. I've got um, three brushes, kind of big, medium, small. You really could do this with just one paintbrush, as long as the paintbrush you're using has like a pointy tip to get into some little hard to reach places. But I kind of just grabbed big, medium, small. Um, here's the set of watercolors that I like to use a lot. A nice little travel case here. I got this one on Amazon by Mei Liang. Perfect little student set, nothing too fancy here. Um, you could have a set that has far less colors and you could still achieve this, even if you have just a basic set of uh, your primaries, red, blue, yellow, little black, maybe a nice magenta to get some nice purples. Um, but yeah, that's the set I'm going to use. I've got water for my watercolors. I've got various markers and pens handy. Um, these are by Sharpie, colored pens. Those are great. I've got uh, paint pens. It's acrylic paint in a pen. Uh, these are by Posca, my favorites. We'll get some of those involved. I've got a big old pickle jar full of colored Sharpies. Those would be good. I mentioned colored pencils, pastels. Maybe you have some inks. Um, whatever anything you have use it in this mixed media piece and then also i have on the side here a couple of uh, examples of a waterproof pen so here is sharpie brand pens or these are very popular sakura pigma micron pens super popular we will be um, outlining our frog first so it is important that they're waterproof Let's say you don't have a waterproof pen at all. Just skip that step and you're going to go right into the painting and then you can always outline later or don't outline at all. Some people don't like the outlines. What else do I have? Oh, I mean, paper towel to dry my brush. Um, I also grabbed, um, so I do have a white paint pen. That's a good one. Or if you don't have that, a uh, just a bottle of dollar store white acrylic to get those nice little dabs of white throughout the whole frog to give him sort of that sheen, that shine, like he's a wet, slippery little guy. Acrylic or paint pen, even like um, there's a product called Bleed Proof White by Dr. PH Martin. That's a good product too. Just something white and opaque because the white of watercolor is see-through. That's no good. Let's move, let's put this over here. These are later. Markers over there. Let's put this guy here. We are going to outline in pen first, just very, um, my scribble style, very rough, very messy. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to be doing extra scribbles, doodles, splashes, splats. I'm going to use, I'm going to use my Sharpie brand, but you can use anything you want, um, even a different color pen. What if you want to outline your frog in green? That makes sense. It's a frog. Let's just do a rough outline of all of our pencil lines. And if you go astray, not a problem. If, you know, one nostril ends up bigger than another nostril, one eye is bigger, that's okay. Very rough. Like, is my eye a perfect circle? No, nope. it's a little bit misshapen, but that's okay. And once you've learned how to do this very colorful, splashy, little bit graffiti-ish style of the frog, you can do any, any animal. You could even do a portrait version of this. It's so much fun. Like, oh, look right here. My, my hand wavered a little bit. There's a, a lump there when it was supposed to be smooth. I'm not worried. Not at all. 
could give them a few extra wrinkles and creases and all these wrinkles in this sort of inner elbow. You can make, say, his elbow more pointed or more rounded. You can make his back a little bit lumpier. Everyone's frogs are going to be different, even though we're using the same sort of tracer. And I do use outlines and tracers a lot. And some people in the world, they'll say, you know, that's not real art, you're tracing. To those people, I say, poo poo. That's no fun to have rules in art. So I will continue to offer tracers. I will continue to use them. We're just giving you a, a jump start, a head start on creating a beautiful image that brings joy, brings relaxation. So what if you traced some elements of it? Everyone's gonna be unique and beautiful even though we traced. All these toes, so many toes. Pretty good. Yeah, there's definitely some places where I went completely off the pencil mark. That's okay. He's got a bit of a, this one's got a little bit more of a hunchback than the original. I'm okay with that. There's some like gaps where I missed. There's a little, a little boo-boo there. That's okay. We're going to cover it up with so much color and uh, pizzazz. It's going to distract from any mistakes. All right. Uh, yeah. Kikini wrote, Kikini wrote, uh, can it sit on a lily pad? Of course, draw a nice lily pad or maybe some blades of grass or a rock. Um, maybe there's some kind of a leaf situation. Give him an accessory. You want him to have a top hat? Go for it. Um, I don't know, a bracelet. Um, maybe a play on the leap day. Maybe give him some um, funny comical bunny ear headband play up on the leap day, add whatever you like. I'm liking what's going on so far. I'm gonna add a few other little details that aren't on the tracer, but we can add them now with our pen. Little spots and dots and things. Let's look at this guy a little closer. On his arm, blobs, blobby dots. Some are more squarish, some are more roundish. Here's some on his leg, like his, would that be his knee? Um, between his two eyes, I guess that's like forehead. Do frogs have a forehead? Is that bridge of the nose? Some little dots there on this arm. Anywhere, if you want your frog to have a spotty belly, put some spots on his belly. And just make all your spots unique. If they're all exactly the same size and the same roundness, well, that's a little dull. Make them unique. I'm gonna go arms, let's go big medium, maybe some small guys, half of a dot. Make it random. They could um, be touching each other. No rules here. It could go all the way down his feet if you want. So I got some there. I'm going to do over here too. I would call this like his forearm. Yeah any amount, any size, any position. There we go, I got a nice little collection on each forearm, let's call it. I'm gonna go between the eyes slash on the back of his eye. This eye, you kind of see it at a kind of a three quarter turn view. So there might be some spots on the back of his eye. Do you want them to come down between his nostrils or on his lip? He could have some spots on his lip if you want. A couple more. Yeah, like
like a little spattering of freckles. All right, what else? Uh, I was talking about like his knee. Would you call that like the knee? Put a few there. Sure. And then I guess his other knee is kind of hidden, but it's right in this zone. A couple there. What about maybe one or two here? Where else? Where else would you like a few more spots? And they don't all have to be outlined too. Later on, I added some like dark blue, yellow spots or some blue ones. This I think is a good amount for now. And then I did add some frogs have like kind of a marking on the side of them. Kind of, I guess, is that rib cage? I'm not sure. I'm going to do like a kind of a, what does that remind me of? Like, like a heart monitor, kind of a zigzag kind of a thing over here. Let's go kind of up and down and kind of a jagged pattern on the side of his body. It could look like that or it could look completely different. Or add more spots. Put some spots here. I'm going to put some spots here. Why not? Hmm, do I want anything else? I think, I think that's good for me, but add whatever else you want to add. That's it for this pen for, for now. Put that over here. Um, ordinarily, I would say erase your visible pencil marks, but I know, I just know that we're gonna cover all of it up with paint, so I'm not even gonna bother with the pencil marks. Let's go with, I'll probably do most of the work with sort of a medium brush. Um, if you're working on a smaller scale, a much smaller drawing, smaller painting, maybe you're going to use mostly your smaller brush. And then, um, yeah, I'll probably do a lot of the splatting with sort of my bigger brush. But you do you. Whatever area you're working on, choose the paintbrush that's the most appropriate for yours in particular. Let's get some water. Now, a lot of people will um, like spray their whole palette with a little bit of a mister bottle to get it kind of going. You could do that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I will start with like lighter colors first. If we did like say purples and blacks and blues right away, our water would get very dark very quickly. So let's start with light colors, yellows, oranges kind of thing. And I want yours to turn out different than mine. So just because like I'm using say um, yellow splats here and green splats here, I want you to pick different areas. I want everyone's to be unique. Um, you know, just because I make his eyes yellow and orange doesn't mean you have to. You could do beautiful uh, green eyes. You could do a mostly blue frog, um, truly, Make it your own. I want to see your personalities, your favorite colors in your painting. So I'm going to go with yellow first. So my brush is wet. I bring some water to here. And I will be talking later about like yellowy orange or greeny blues that I have here. But if you don't have those, mix them. Right in this, um, I use the lid or on a plate or a palette mix two colors together to get your yellowy greens or your reddish purples. The sky's the limit. All right, yellow. For me, I want his eyes to be yellow and orange. So I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm gonna fill in the colored part of his eye. So not the, not the black pupil and not that little white square. I filled in the rest of it yellow. And it is like painting with juice. It's watery. It's uh, okay if it goes outside of the line. That's okay. It's not thick like acrylic, um, like a toothpaste consistency. It's like 
juice. So there is one yellow eye, and I'm going to do some yellow in this eye. Again, I'm not painting the pupil, the black part, nor that little white square. Let's leave that alone. So there's yellow in the eye. But to that wet yellow, we're going to add, could be a little orange, could be a little red, could be green, could be pink, whatever you feel like. I've got, got several oranges. I'm going to go with maybe this one. Rub, 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 get that one kind of activated. So we've got wet eyes. I'm getting more wet paint, wet and wet. Just dab a little orange, maybe the sort of right side. Dab a little wet in wet. And everyone's paint is going to react differently. Yours might spread a lot or a little. Put a little bit of orange in here, maybe along the bottom kind of area. It's even okay if most of the yellow gets covered up. If the orange has flowed where you, let's say, didn't put it. it, it wants to go where it wants to go. So there's yellow, there's orange, and I've already gone outside the line several times. No one's gonna be able to see that. I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna go a little red. Let's see, I've got so many reds. Let's go with this red, just a little. I'm going to dab a little red, maybe at the very bottom, maybe the very right side, maybe at the very bottom of this one. Or you can have a little more. You don't have to limit yourself. Might go back and put a little bit more orange in here. Play around with it. Yeah, that's a good amount. I've got yellow, orange, and red, all in the eye. Let's do more yellow. I'm thinking his feet. His feet are quite uh, bright and fiery. We'll do the same kind of thing. We'll have yellow, add a little orange, add a little red. Get some yellow going on all these toeses. I might, let's go with, I'm gonna go with this brush. Yeah. Oops, I just went outside of the line one, two, three times. Oops. <laughs> it's not going to matter. Not at all. Get all these long, knobbly toes. Some nice yellow, nice and bright. Pretty watery. Let's get these toes. Again, you could do a different color. Do lime green toes. Do pink toes. Look at that. Look how far outside the line I went there. That's okay. Keep telling yourself that. If someone is watching you paint and they're like, ha ha, you went outside the line. I'd like to see them try it. There we go, yellow toes. You could go further up the arm with yellow if you want, that's okay. Let's see, yellow, yellow, yellow. Uh, Dream a Lamb asked, what paper am I using? Where's my paper pad? That's way across here. Um, can I reach it? It is Canson. Ugh. I use this one a lot. Sorry, I didn't show you earlier. Canson XL watercolor paper. Um, I'm using quite a big size today. I always say that this paper is a medium quality for a medium price. And I use it a lot. So I've got my yellow, still very watery. Let's get a little orange and just dab it, um, let's say, on the underside of a toe. So like, as if the toe is a little bit shaded. We go with the bottom of a toe, bottom of the toe. It's like we're shading the toe along the bottom. 
little bit wet and wet. It's going to flow and run and move wherever it wants to. So some toes will end up being more orange or less orange than others. So just going along the bottom, bottom, bottom. And even you can go along the like bottom of the, the length of these toes. So right along, right along here, right along there. The, what would that be like his, the heel, like the heel of the palm. Bottom, even like down here, the bottom. Do I want a little more? I like when it really starts flowing around. And yours can look completely different. It's still right. It's still correct. Oh, yes. Uh, Maureen and Danny asked, is 140 pounds? Okay, yes. That's actually the exact weight that I'm using. Go figure. It's pretty common. I'm going to get a little red going. A little red. And the same thing, just drop it in, dab it in. It's going to flow, it's going to go wherever it wants. Just going right along sort of the very, very bottom. Yes, yeah, it's, it's bleeding, it's flowing. That is okay in this case. Maybe um, maybe your paper is really thirsty and it's like sucked up all of the yellow and your yellow is kind of drying and it's not flowing as much as you want it. You can just, you know, get your brush wet, tap it off a little so it's not drenched and you can kind of encourage some of the paint to flow and bleed and move with a little gentle nudge with a wet brush, just kind of smudge it around. We're, we're not going for perfection here. We are not perfectionists. We are not going for realism. All right, where else? I think I wanna do some yellow on like the lips, lip area. Some more yellow going. So I've got uh, upper lip and lower lip. Let's get a little of that going. Nice bright lips. Yellow along the lips. That's nice. And your belly, do you want your belly to be, mine's kind of like orangey with a little bit of, a little bit of everything mixed in there. Orange, let's do a little orange belly. We're working with light, light colors to start. Let's get some orange and kind of blob it around on the belly. And it's okay if like say this orange I'm putting down um, touches some of the lip and that bleeds into each other. Or if some of the orange I'm putting here touches like one of the toes and it bleeds into that We're all working with the same color colors in here. So it's not, not the end of the world if they bleed into each other. There's some orange on the belly. Still very watery, 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 nice and bright. Where else would I like brightness? Maybe the, I did add some, where is it? That little pattern I did on the side of him is orange in this case. Let's throw a little orange there. And I'm not even caring about staying in the lines. Look at this, I'm just kind of blobbing it 
in this general area, way outside the lines. That's okay. Wonderful. Looking around, I'm thinking I'm gonna do some bright green next. I do want quite a bit of my frog to have green because that's kind of a froggy color. If you don't have a bright green such as this one here or like a sap green down here, um, mix yellow, yellow with a tiny bit of a green that you have. You can mix it in the lid or on a palette, a bright green. Think lemon lime. But again, you can do whatever, whatever you want. This is your painting. Where do I want to start with the green? Maybe like the, what do we call this? Bridge of his nose, forehead. Is that what that is? I'm going to try to not get too much of the green and red touching. If I have green and red touching, it's going to accidentally make brown. So I'm just going to avoid having those touch if they're still wet. So this red here is getting a little dry. This one's also getting a little dry. Even if you leave a white gap, that's perfectly fine. We're also going to add so much marker work, scribbles that no one's going to notice a small white gap. Some green in this upper lip nose forehead area. Maybe I'll go to about here. Some of my green and my yellow on the lip blended together. That's okay. That is okay. Nice and bright. Where else would I like some green? And again, you could choose different areas to do green. I'm going to do green um, like his forearms the forearms here they are and i'm going right over top of my spotties those spots we drew just go right over top you can always paint them individually later there we go a little a little of the reddish orange and the green touched and it made like kind of a muddy that's okay just a little of it there is a green sort of forearm. Let's do the other one to match, but they don't have to. Green forearm. Green would make sense if the, the knee was also green. But again, choose a completely different color. Go, go blue here if you want some green. Yeah, a little of the orange went into my green. Don't stress. Let's see, we'll get some green in here. Lovely, starting to fill in here. I'm going to do a little green along like his back, rib cage, whatever you call that area. Yeah, some of this orange might blend in with my green. That's okay. It's mostly staying put because the orange has had a, a minute to dry. Green, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's kind of where I wanted the green. Good, but I want to add some other tones of green in there to kind of give it more pizzazz. So do you have a slightly darker green? in your palette. Could be like emerald, it could be like a hooker's green or a sap green. Um, or if you don't have a darker green, use whatever green you do have 
add a little blue to it. That'll darken the one green you have if you just have one green. I'm going to go with this like emerald green. So it's kind of bluey greeny. Let's get that going. Oh, I've had my first accident. I, I splattered my paper. And I'm not going to freak out because we're going to um, purposely splatter it later. So even if like you're painting along and then you accidentally go like that, oops, ordinarily you might freak out a little bit, but we're going to do that anyway later. So don't panic. Got some dark green on the brush. Anywhere you have that green and it's still a little wet, you can dab in a slightly darker green. So I'm going kind of between the eyes there, could be under this eyeball, a little bit of darker green, because maybe the eyeball is casting a shadow because it's a bulgy eyeball. There we go. What about like this part of his leg? Maybe it would be darker because it's kind of covered by the arm would that be an arm maybe the maybe the edge of the arm and if some of your um greens aren't like blending and you want them to blend just get a little water a little water encourage it to kind of flow a little more green let's go maybe along here Maybe, um, maybe along here, maybe this is like back, back of the knee. The joints of a frog are confusing. Is this like the heel? I'm not sure. There's some darker green in there. What about, I'm going to go a little bit along the back, a little bit darker green. I'm just... Wherever, wherever you want, maybe a little in here. Yeah, so now he's got two, two tones of green. I like it. Okay, we've got the warm colors. We've got the green. Now let's go with purples and blues. How about it? I've got uh, loads of purple like inside his mouth to kind of show that it's like a, a dark hole. I've got purple along his like belly, like in here, because it's maybe very shaded. He's got the arm, he's got uh, his belly protruding. So maybe that side would be darker. Got some blue on the forearms, back of the leg here, some purples. Oh, we got some blue over there. Wherever, wherever. Let's get some, I'm gonna go with blue. Got several blues. What's your favorite blue? I like this one, it's kind of like phthalo blue. That's a nice, nice common blue. Sky blue is also nice. I'm gonna do some blue right in here. But you might do yours in a different place. I'll go get some blue on this kind of upper arm. I guess you could call it the upper arm. Some of my blue and green are touching and blending. That's okay. There's a kind of a dry bit of orange here next to the wet blue. I can kind of get some water and kind of mash them up together. Or anywhere else, I'm going to get some blue on the um, thigh above the knee. I guess this would be a thigh. I can get some blue over here. We are certainly starting to fill in any remaining blank areas.
there's some blue. What about if I dab a little of the blue in some of the green areas? You can do that. You can do anything you want. A little bit of blue amongst the green. Oh, yes, yeah, starting to really come together here. Let's go with, yeah, I'll go with some purple next. Several purples available to me. Let's go with this one. Or skip purple altogether. Maybe you don't want any purple. Some of the purple could go into the blue. Where else could I do a purple? A little bit maybe on an arm, in the crook of an elbow, in the armpit. Oh, we're having a big, big bleed but I just kind of soak it up a little soak it up with the brush wipe it off any big big bleeds that are out of control mm -hmm. I'm gonna do purple in his mouth that's right I'm gonna go I'm gonna go right across there's kind of like a semicircle for like the back of the throat but I'm just going to paint right across that, but I can darken it later. And my yellow, my yellow lips are quite dry, so I don't have to worry too much about the yellow and the purple bleeding. That dried itself a while ago. There's some purple. I'm going to add some red in the mouth. Red down below here, red under the tongue. The red and the purple can touch and blend and mix. Okay, we got red in the mouth, purple. That uh, that semicircle that I covered with purple, let's darken that with like a little blue or even a little black if you wanted to. Let's get some nice dark in there. And it's okay if it runs out of that circle shape. Nice and dark in there. I will give that a moment to dry before I add that pink tongue. I don't want too much bleeding happening on the tongue. So I'll leave that for a moment. I'm going to soak up some of my little blob there. And as things dry, they do look lighter. So if you're noticing, you know, this purple area, when I first put it on there, it was quite rich, quite dark, but it's it's drying, it's fading. I could dab in more purple. See how, how much richer that is with some more purple dabbed in. Blah, blah, blah. Any of the colors. If some of your, you know, orange. Here I had some nice bright orange, but it's quite faded now. Dab some more. Orange, red. You'll have shapes that have formed since it's been drying that, you know, you didn't plan for, but watercolor just does that. Hard edges, those are fine. So we've got sort of a hard edge between this orange and this purple. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, things happened as the eye was drying. I've got kind of this orange kind of circle shape. That's okay. What else? Let's put a little bit more orange in here. This orange really faded as it dried. Take a few minutes, just dab in colors that you want to just intensify. A little bit more 
orange, a little bit more green. Mm -hmm. Oh, more blue. Purple. Everyone's just gonna look different, and that's a good thing. Yeah, you know, all kinds of weird shapes are happening in here. Some parts are dry, some parts are wet. That's okay. Let's give the tongue a few few minutes, but we can work on um, one of the more fun parts of this tutorial. The splashes, these very energetic bursts coming outwards from our frog. They're gonna be so much fun. You're gonna wanna do it in all your paintings from now on. <laughs> and you can do any colors anywhere. Now it sometimes makes sense if like, say if you have like, there's a bit of blue on his leg here. So I made a blue psh, splash coming out from that kind of zone. There's some green on his back. I have some green bursting from there. So you could do that, match up the colors or do a color that's completely different, the opposite, the complement color. So if you have um, green, do like a red burst. If you have, uh, blue, do a yellow, orange burst, do an orange, do, you know, something completely different to really accentuate the frog. You could do that. All right, let's, and it's okay if some of these edges are wet, because if, if it kind of blends a little bit, that's cool too. I'm going to use probably like my slightly bigger brush. Get that guy out. So it holds a lot of painty water in it. Let me start with, I'm gonna start with yellow. Let's start with some yellow. Get a lot of watery yellow loaded in your brush. If you only have like a medium to work with, that's fine. A lot of painty water in there. Really dab and blob it wherever you want to do your splat. So I'm going to do a yellow one near his yellow foot. Really make like a nice, it's like a little pile, a pile of wet yellow. And I'm going to move, I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't accidentally get too much paint on that. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this so that when I blow, we're going to physically blow it with our breath it's gonna go like this. So turn turn it as you go so that you're kind of blowing away from you, right? That makes sense. So here's a big blob of yellow. Get your head in there. There we go. All these splats are gonna turn out completely different. You might have like a million little tendrils or just two main ones. So there's my first one. You can sort of control it by you know, aiming your breath, really blowing hard or a little gentler. Let me do a ba, 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 green. Where should I have a green one? I'm going to go with coming out of his head. Really blob a whole bunch of wet green right up there. There we go. Get your head right in there. That one went right off the page. Isn't that fun? Do as many or as few as you want. Let's go boo boo boo. I'm gonna go purple. I'm gonna do purple along his sort of back here. Even though there's no purple here, I think it's a nice compliment. I need more, more water. I'm gonna add even more. Oh yeah, 
that's a that's a big one. And if it didn't work out the first time, chuck some more in there. Blow it again. Oh, yeah, that was a double. Keep going. Um, blue? Blue. Where would I like to do blue? Maybe right here. Right there. Blob it on there. <laughs> Let's see, red or let's go right in here. Could be in between the toes, could be. There we go. I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to blow it this way, even if some of it blows on his existing toes here. That's cool. <gasps> got a little covered up. What else? And you don't have to do every color if you want to just do your favorite three colors. Mm -hmm. Orange? Yeah, orange. Let's go here. <laughs> That one didn't turn out so good, but you can sort of cheat it too if you want a specific area to have kind of make your own little tendrils and then blow those. So we're kind of fudging it. And that one got a second blow. All right, I'll do a few more. I'm not gonna do, you do want some white space too. Let's go. I did like the orange. I'll do another orange. <laughs> there we go. That's a better one. Let's look at my first one. How many did I do? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ish. Hmm, I'll do a little red. And they could definitely be like touching or overlapping each other if you have like an orange slash red or a green slash blue. <laughs> A little bit more green, yeah. Green and yellow. <laughs> Those go nice together. <laughs> hmm, and think about your negative space too, the empty spaces. Do you need a something, something over here to balance this or even um, hold your painting further away from you or stand up, walk away from it, back up and see, you know, do you need more blues? Do you need more greens? What's missing? What's it lacking? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. You can re-blow some of the areas. Hmm, I'm kind of happy with that. That might be a good amount, but you can always add more later. What am I going to do? I'm going to paint that tongue. Let's do the tongue. Oops. Pink or red or, I don't know. Can, can frogs have like a black tongue? Can frogs have like a blue tongue? They can in your world. If you want your frog to have a black and white polka dot tongue, absolutely, you do that. There is some pink on the tongue. And even if maybe a little purple or a little red is still wet and it bleeds a little in the pink, I think that'd be okay. 
those colors go well together. There's some pink on the tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm liking that. And then I think one of the last things I'm going to paint uh, with the watercolors is I'm going to add some splashes and drips. And then we'll let the whole thing dry and then we could add pens, markers, pencil crayons. So let's add some splashes and drips. So like those drips that I accidentally made earlier, let's add a few more of those. I can use my bigger brush so it holds a lot of painty water. Any of the colors we've already been using, I'm gonna move things out of the way that you don't want splashed. I put the towel down. Did you notice I put the towel down to absorb? Get your brush loaded. Now you can tap your paintbrush on your finger or tap it on another paintbrush, tap, tap, tap. And that gives you kind of like smaller splashes and drips and it could be right on the frog itself in the background on these splashes wherever you want so that gives you tiny tiny little drips and some of these are landing in wet paint and it's kind of like blurring and moving and that's awesome that's fine but if you want some bigger drips and drops i'm gonna do orange load up your brush lots of painty water and just hurl your brush at the painting and stop short like you're flicking a magic wand. So flick, flick, flick. And these are going to be bigger, more energetic drips and splats. It's okay if, you know, orange lands on purple, blue lands on green. You can sort of aim it, but it kind of goes wherever it wants to go. If you want to have like these blue drips near the blue, purple, near the purple, you can do that, or just kind of go wild all over. You can experiment with like even waterier paint and it'll be like a light blue versus a dark blue. What other colors do I like? Maybe some pink. I think I need more pink in this painting. I just did the tongue only. That's boring. And absolutely stop when you feel is the right amount. Because I like a lot, but you might not like as many as I do. Okay, I've got, got yellow, I've got blue, orange, pink, green, a little green. New colors are forming. There we go. It looks like a hot mess. Don't worry, we're gonna, we'll tidy it up with some line work. Okay, that looks good. Now we do have to let this dry before we start adding more doodles, more art media to it. In the meantime, um, yeah, you can like fan it. If you have like a hair dryer, you can hair dry it, but it's gonna dry pretty, pretty quickly. You've got uh, the paper sucking in the water. You've got it evaporating a little bit. You can fan it. In the meantime, let's look at some upcoming events with me, Chris. If you've been enjoying my teaching style, my art style, you're going to love what's coming up. I've got a few to show you here. All right. This uh, is on, I want to say, March the 14th. I think that's two weeks from today. Isn't he cute? I called it Kiss Me, I'm Irish. It's kind of like an Irish setter kind of coloring. It's just before St. Patrick's Day. Very similar to what we're doing here. We're gonna do a, you get a traceable. Where is it? Everyone gets a tracer for the dog. You draw your own hat. 
and then we outline it with pen. We fill it in with messy watercolor. We splat it. We have fun with it. And then we add a little bit of white to kind of emphasize that kind of uh, curly fur of an Irish setter. So this one is a paid event. So you buy the tickets on our website, artistpalettedurham.com. You um, get the video tutorial released on March 14th. So it won't be live on the 14th. You get the full video recording of this and you do that that night or anytime afterwards. You have access to that recording forever. Join me for that one. March 14th, Kiss Me I'm Irish. And let me show you another one. Again, very similar style. I have a, I have a aesthetic, is that the word? Yeah, my aesthetic is watercolor, messy, splashy. This one is going to be the next free one on YouTube Live. So right here in about a month's time, um, four weeks from now is March 28th, I believe. And this one's called Little Lamb. And again, you do get a tracer. So similar to tonight's event, you get the tracer when you sign up uh, for the free ticket on our website, you pre-trace it, and then together we will do the little lamb and, and his little chick friend on his head. This is perfect for Easter. You could turn this into like a cute little Easter greeting card because Easter, I think, is like the very end of March. So this one's March 28th. Perfect. Um, so both of those events are on the website. All of our paid ones and our free ones are on the website. Click to sign up with your free ticket and then you get that uh, outline. You get that reminder email as well. Let me show you, this is a, a sneak peek. Sneak peek, this is gonna be in, I'm pretty sure April. We'll go April, mid-April. Um, I've done one similar to this before, but we're doing uh, this one in April. I'm going to call it Seahorse and Scallops. It is fabric paint and watercolor on a small canvas. So we've done one similar. This one was just released two weeks ago. This Ginger Cat fabric paint and watercolor. If you enjoyed this one, you're going to enjoy this one. And it's all the same materials that you already have. Um, that's the ginger cat. So this ginger cat, there's another version of it. This tutorial is on our website right now as we speak. If you wanted to purchase that one and give that a try. The fabric paint is raised up, so it kind of has the feel of stained glass. Lots of fun. Again, you get a tracer for that. Um, yeah, so if any of those interest you, check out our website, artistpalettedurham.com. What else can I show you while we let this dry? It's, it's going pretty well. I see a few parts that are a little like puddly. If you have a tissue or a bit of paper towel nearby and you have like a really puddly spot somewhere, just soak, soak it up a tiny bit. Just get a little bit of it on your tissue. Don't take all of it away. It'll just help it get there faster. But for the most part, it's looking good. A few more minutes and it should be getting there. Or keep fanning. Fan, fan, fan. Hair dryer. Let's see here. What else can I show you? What have we had recently? Oh, this one was hilarious. So um, Tuesday this week, two days ago, was International Polar Bear Day. And this one was just released on our website, the tutorial for Snowy Selfie. I like doing like a, like a family or a collection of, of an animal. So I've got polar bears, I've got... Um, there's one with dogs in the summer. 
and there's one with cats in the winter and they're just lots of fun. So this one in particular, you don't get a tracer for this. I walk you through drawing all these different polar bear kind of caricatures. Like you can envision maybe this is the sister bear. This is maybe the big brother bear. There could be a mom bear. So this one is a paid tutorial on our website. Just got added Tuesday. What else can I show you? Oh yes, this one's gorgeous. Have you ever tried painting with coffee or tea? We've done quite a few. There is even one on our channel right now called Tipsy Teacups. It's a painting made of coffee and tea. So on, the, on this channel that you're on right now, but recently I made this one out of coffee and tea. The purpley tones is a black cherry tea. And then of course the brown tones are Coffee, instant coffee, no joke. So if that interests you, check out the website. Just type in the search word coffee and you'll get several hits. But if you wanna try a free coffee and tea event uh, tutorial on this channel, Tipsy Teacups, try that out. All right, um, how are we doing? Pretty good. If yours is not as dry and you don't want to risk a, maybe like you're drawing and then you like rip the paper because it's still wet, hit pause. You can pause alive and you can rewind, um, but you can hit pause, wait till yours is more dry and then hit play and then continue on with me. But if yours is fairly dry, Mine's, I would say mine's 90% dry. There's still a few shiny spots, but it's going to be fine. Okay, bring out your markers, bring out your pens, bring out your pencil crayons, your pastels. I've got Sharpies. Ugh. There's a bunch of Sharpies. What else? What else is nearby? I guess you could add like glitter, stickers, um, anything really. I've got these. I like the paint pens. These are my faves. Wild flying markers. Gold, silver. Do you have... Um, gel pens, um, glitter glue, anything, anything you want to add. Good. Okay. Let's just have a little closer look at this. We'll add the white bits later, but I've done sort of a scribbly thing in the background. The hint of maybe uh, like a graffiti tag, if you will. I've got like my signature kind of hidden amongst some of the scribbles. And then I also, with my paint pens or, or with paint, your watercolors, your acrylics, I've added like these kind of circle bubbles coming out all different sizes. If that's something you like, I even have the, uh, the, uh, the years in here. If you didn't notice 2024 is right there. Yeah. Here's my, my signature kind of hidden in there. My tag is in there. I've scribbled right on him, right on his belly. I've outlined things. I've added more spots. You could add, you know, here's some blue spots that got added after the fact. And then at the very, very end, we'll add white. White will highlight. White will give the illusion that he's wet, slimy. <laughs> All right, what I would like to start with is, where's my black? Oh, right here. Whether you're going to use black paint, black pen, black marker, the pupils of his eyes. Let's start with that because that's something that's going to really improve his look instantly. It's going to look amazingly better with just that simple shape filled in 
a black pupil. If you doubted how this painting would turn out up until this point, you will have no doubts after you just fill in his eye black. Already, he's getting more caricature. He's looking more proper, like a frog ought to look. If you go outside the lines a little, that's okay. Bam, that simple step filling in the black eye. He's already looking 200 times better, right? All right, I do like, I'm one for black outlines of things. I think it makes it look bold and crisp and pop out of the page. If you're not one to do a lot of black outlines, you don't have to. You could do no outlines, you could do green outlines, blue outlines. I do like the look of a heavier black outline. So maybe around some main body parts, I'm gonna add some more outlines. You can also add more wrinkles, add more texture to this guy. If, uh, if some of the original drawing got a little bit lost because maybe your purple is really dark and you can't see original pen lines, just reference your, your outline, reference, this, reference that, or make it up. Make it up if you can't remember what it looked like before. But I'm not going to outline everything, just kind of major body parts. Maybe just along the bottom of the toe, because it's like darker, let's say. You can be selective with your outlines. Yeah, see over here, I've added some black outlines and looks more vivid this half of him versus like this half of him. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to exactly follow the lines. I've already gone away from the line here, there, there. black. Try something new. Try a blue outline. Try a purple outline. I might just go, it just went sort of underneath the tongue, not the whole tongue. off the page. I'm going to add random extra lines. This could be like a wrinkle. Just extra texture. Ooh, I'm going to color in his nostrils, too. Those little nostrils got a little hidden in all of our little freckles. 
Let's get those back. If they're completely lost, if you can't see them anymore, just make up some nostrils for him. There they are. Where else would I like some extra lines just for the sake of it? Yeah, for sure. There we go. I'm going to do some scribbling in that dark hole for like his throat. I'm just going to scribble in some black because I want it to be quite dark. There, so it looks like that's like going down his throat. Do frogs have one of those little danglers that we have, the uvula? Do they have one of those? This one doesn't. Oops. That's all right. Okay, is that good? I think that's good for me for now with the black, but I can always add more later. All right. I'm going to add some, ba -ba -ba, maybe some blue. I like the blue. Oh, and where's my light blue? I've got two colors of blue. I'm going to color some of my spots light blue. I could do some of them dark blue, or you could just make up your own extra spots anywhere you want. Here's some blue spots. And it's okay, again, if, you know, some of the blue goes outside of the line. So I've done some light blue right in here. And some of the, some of the line got covered up. Some of the blue went outside of the line, that's okay. Or you could do maybe purple spots, yellow spots. It's also okay if your pen or marker doesn't fully cover up the color underneath. It kind of blends the two together. That's, that's a good look too. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going ahead and making all my spots like the same color but that's just me. You can do a whole rainbow, a multitude of colors on your spots. And I can't stop you. Get these freckles, got some on the lip here, the nose, back of the eyeball. Yeah, mine are pretty subtle because I've used a light blue on kind of a darker green. So it's not super bold, but I like the effect. And hey, what if I want to add a few more dots? I'm going to add some more spots, but these, these don't have outlines because I'm just inventing them as I go. And that's OK. There we go, a few more spots. What about I get my dark blue going? Maybe I just invent some over here now. Are your spots squarish? Are your spots roundish? Mine are kind of both. You could even add some hidden images. What if you do a little heart shape? What if you do someone's initials hidden in in this design, whether it's the spots or in the scribbles later. So many opportunities to have a hidden image. There's some blue. Do I want more blue? <laughs> I did a little blue around his eye as if the blue is the shadow. I'll add a little bit more blue along the back of the eye here. Maybe that's sort of like the shadow. Anywhere else, maybe along here. So 
nice blue accents anywhere. It could be purple, could be some along the back I'll do some along the back what if I got a little <laughs> purple do I have a purple I have this purple nope let's do this purple let's try that maybe any colors anywhere some purple sharpie that's good now I'm gonna go wild and I want you to also go wild scribbles your signature words you could write the word frog over and over again you could write hoppy leap day make it messy so literally you could just close your eyes I'm, I'm close my eyes i've got a purple sharpie in my hand i'm just gonna make a scribble it could be roundy it could be jaggedy there we go i closed my eyes i made this weird trailing scribble what if i want to do someone's belly here of course you don't have to close your eyes for all of it you could do purple on purple you could do red on purple you could do yellow on green you could do whatever you want it could be jagged it could be um, really tight it could be round you could darken areas darken inside his mouth what about another color let's get a little bright green practice your signature a bunch of times There we go. Let's do my tag. Pick another color. Do it again. What about the year? I put a 2024 hidden in there. Put that in there. What about... Ooh, let's get some of this scribbles on the tongue give the tongue some texture maybe some scribbles in the eye um on the belly trailing off into the background way out here doesn't have to make sense at all what color oh maybe this kind of like a aqua tealy green I mostly left his eyes alone I kind of like the look of the eyes being kind of clear but of course you can do whatever you want whatever you want Put, uh, put your kids' names in here somewhere. Put your husband's name. Put your spouse's name in there. No one knows what's happening. Ooh, I'm getting really wild. Um, ba -ba -ba. What do I got? Oh, I got hot pink. Let's see what hot pink is like. Good. That's a little weird. Eh. Yeah, getting there. What about yellow? as many as you want or as few as you want it 
if some if something like gets covered up and then you want it to like re-darken it such as like my eye got a little scribble on it but i like my eye to be black so i'm going to cover up that scribble i made There we go, that's better. Um, do I want some black? Let's do some black. My black is dying. Yeah, it's really dying. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like where we're at. I want to add some... Mm, mm, mm. Do you want to add the white? Let's add the circly bubbles and then we can add some white. That That's a good order, I think. So kind of in the background, different sized bubbles. If that's a look that you like, I've got some light green ones there. Um, or maybe a different shape, maybe some hearts, hearts kind of fluttering off literally anything what about cute um butterflies butterfly shapes going in all directions circles are just kind of a basic shape that everyone knows how to draw circles so i'm going to do i'm going to do like a half a circle here coming out of his back and then do some medium circles some little baby circles they can of course touch they can, of course, overlap each other. I've got some red circles here. Any number, any size. You could do this in um, colored pencil. You could do this in marker, alcohol markers. Those are great. Those are nice and rich colors. Some nice that's so dark it's almost black it's actually a very dark dark green that's fun what about um oh, blue yeah i'll do some blue it could even be like on the frog's toes itself it could be within the frog anywhere I made like an accidental hidden Mickey. It's like a little Mickey Mouse. Where else? I want a big one. Big one right here. Yeah. That's fun. That adds just like another texture. Another. little interesting visual element where else so what's some yellow where's a good yellow yeah some of my paint is kind of blending with the paint with the the color underneath that's okay Thanks for joining us, Jemifer. It is so fun. It doesn't just look fun. It is fun. You should try this. This video is going to be available on our channel forever. So 
you haven't missed anything, you can still do the whole tutorial right from the start. Where else? Where else? Where else? Again, uh, hold your painting, hold your drawing away from you and get a different perspective. Think about, you know, do I need to add more yellow on this side or more blue on this side? Or take a step back, just physically stand up, step back, look at it from a different angle, different view. Blue and yellow makes green. Unintentional green. There we go. Hmm, 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 hmm. Where else? Maybe some. Let's see if I can't coax some black out of here. It's getting really dry. Nope. That black is done. Let's get a new one. Oh, I've got a fat one. Look at this. Look at that fatty. Let's do... What about, um, let's do some black over here. You could keep layering and layering and layering all night. And it's going to look amazing. People are going to think you worked on this for days. All the details. I like the black. Really heavy black really complements it. Yeah, it does look like a crown on his head. Maureen and Danny says this looks like a crown. You're right. You could like do a like a stylized little graffiti crown on his head outline. That could be an idea. All right. Um, I'm happy with the amount of scribbles, splats, dots, outlines, signatures. I'm happy with that. And consider your negative space too. Is there like a very empty spot anywhere? I'm going to add some white before we wrap this up. So I've got white paint pen or I've got the white acrylic. I'm going to use the white acrylic with like, like a thin brush. Thin brush will help with this. So we want it to look like he's shiny. So picture um, the sun or whatever light source is maybe coming at the frog from this direction. So wherever the light would touch would be a highlight, would be shiny. Oh, I'm going to use I'm gonna use the little bit of white that's in this lid. Get a little white going. So get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. So like the top left of his eyeball, like right on the black itself. I'm going to put some white. And the white could be broken lines. It could be a solid line. It could be little dabs and dashes. It doesn't have to be um, perfect. Little dabs and dashes are going to give you the kind of a bumpy skin feel. I'm going to do a little bit of white, and then I'll hold it up closer to the camera so you can see. Ooh, maybe a little bit on on the nostril, each nostril. A little bit on the lip. And I'll hold this up in a sec. And this could go like right on top of scribbles. It could go on top of 
anything you already have. Where else do I want white? Okay, so I've just done a little bit on like his eyes and kind of between the eyes. Little dabs and lines and dashes of white. If you have a paint pen, those are also handy. But this one has got to get get flowing again, like his his tongue. No, that one's not not flowing correctly. Let's get the tongue with the white acrylic. His tongue would be wet. It's in his mouth. Doesn't that tongue look wetter now that there's little blobs of white on it? All right, what else? Just anywhere. Creases. Got some on his lip. I'm going to do, you know, elbows. I'm going to do wrists. I'm going to do knees. I'm generally going with sort of the top of something or the left side of something because the sun is coming from this way. And I think the more the merrier. I don't think you could put too many here. But I think dots and dashes are key, broken lines. Put a little, a little bit on every toe. Every toe might have a highlight on it. Oh, my family's home. How was the music lesson? Good. We're just, we are wrapping up our frog. He's looking really cute. Where else? Maybe like his wrinkles, his creases. They might have a little bit of, of a highlight. Elbows. Where else? Maybe the back of the leg. Definitely a little bit on each toe, like a little hit, hit, hit on each toe. Where else? Maybe this elbow a little bit more. Just in his mouth in general, because like it's wet in there, right? It could just have I'm looking around. I think I'm happy with that. So let's look at this guy. This guy has like more. I think I did like just a lot more on this one. He looks quite, and then I used my paint pen on some of these wrinkles. This guy's still looking quite slick. Yeah, I like that. What else can you add? Um, more scribbles, more shapes, more hidden images, hidden words. If you wanted to do more of the splats and drips, you still can. More of the, you know, the blown shapes. Put some more paint on there, blow it, layer it, get some more in there. I'm happy with that. Oh, I did add on this one, there's a few hidden hearts. There's a hidden heart, hidden heart. And I know I already put my signature 
couple times in here, but I will add one final signature. I usually just add my initials. Let's stick that right in here. The old initials. I just put right down here. You could hide it in there. You could put it at the bottom down here. You could put the year. You could put, um, you could put leap day 2024. Commemorate this day. In four years, you could do it again and see how you've improved over that four years. What skills have you developed since then? That'd be interesting to see. All right. Um, yeah, I have some time for any questions you might have. Type them in the live chat there, or you can always email us with some questions. I would love to see a photo of your finished Leap Day Frog. Um, we have some wonderful Facebook groups. Um, I think I included links to those Facebook groups in the email that went out. Um, otherwise, I think down in the description down below here, I've linked at least one of our Facebook groups. So on Facebook, if you type in Artist Palette Durham, it's like a painting slash drawing and free event support group, or the Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region Facebook group, also a good place uh, to share your work and get advice and um, see the next upcoming events, both free and paid events. Any questions? Type them in the chat now. I want to say uh, thank you once again to those who did send me a tip in appreciation when you signed up for the free ticket on our website. I truly appreciate your support. Roseanne says it's going to be a great project with their granddaughter. I love that. I would love to see a photo of your work and her work together. I love when there's multiple generations. Um, kids just are so what's the word, like free, liberal, just splatting it, don't care what's happening, they don't care that it's, you know, wrong, going out of the lines, <laughs> they're just um, great to watch, making art, okay, I don't see any questions coming in, I hope everyone has a good rest of Leap Day 2024. And big happy birthday to anyone who's celebrating today. It is a rare, rare birthday. All right, guys. Happy painting. Bye now. <laughs>